Hello and welcome to today's photo editing tip of the day. So one of the common problems that we have when we overexpose our images is the loss of detail in the highlights. So this particular image is straight out of the camera and this was given to us from Sherry who is a part of our private Facebook group for photography and editing. So if you want to join as well and learn more about photography and editing, you can find the link in the description below. So Sherry wanted to know if we could make this image better based on her original edit or whether or not it was salvageable to show the client because she lost a lot of detail in the snow and other parts of the image in the highlights when she overexposed the image at the time of capture. So this is her edit. This is straight out of camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and select both of these and press the letter C. So we can see those side by side and we can see that she did a very great job of improving the overall image with her edit by adding some contrast and clarity and making the couple stand out a little bit more. They're not as washed out as in the original image. So her question was, was this image or this edit okay to present to our client? Yes, it is, but I think we can bring back some detail in the snow, even though that detail is gone and we can improve the overall edit by darkening or dodging and burning other parts of the image to help the couple stand out more than in her current edit right now. So I wanna show you how I edited this image and then you can decide what you like, what you don't like and make those adjustments for your own images and learn how to bring back details and highlights if that data is clipped. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. But first I wanna show you my final edit which is this one right here. It's a little bit darker, but I did some dodging and burning in the background and the foreground to make the couple stand out more so than in the edit that Sherry did. So this is hers on the right, mine on the left. I also added some detail and clarity in the hair right here to help that stand out a little bit more, give it a little bit more texture, a little bit more depth. And I believe, I feel that the couple stands out and pops off of the image in the background more so with a darker background versus the original background, which is much brighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the original image here and we'll go ahead and get started. So anytime I do an edit, let's get into the develop module here. I will begin with the basic panel. Actually, I will start with the histogram to read the histogram. And we can see that the overall image is overexposed. So if you click on this little icon here, you get this red overlay, this red mask, and it shows you the parts of the image that is losing detail. In this case, the highlights. If we click on the black point triangle here, we can see that part of the image is not losing any detail, but we do have a gap over here. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna fill in that gap to increase the dynamic range of the image. And I can do that from the histogram by clicking right here and dragging to the left until that histogram comes close to the edge of that side of the histogram. If I go too far, then I will get this blue color overlay or this blue mask showing that detail was lost in that area. So we don't want to do that. So you may want to turn on these little clipping mask tools right here to help you ensure that you're not over editing and clipping data. Now we already have data clipped and we can't recover it because it's been clipped at the time of capture. But as you're editing future images and making adjustments, you will benefit from having that turned on. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off now because it's kind of annoying. So the first thing I would wanna do for this particular image is drop the exposure. So I'm gonna start off with about a half a stop and we can see that the blacks were adjusted accordingly based on the adjustment I did in the histogram. Now I'm going to try and recover some of the highlights in the image by adjusting the highlight slider. And if I bring that all the way down to 100, minus 100, 
We can see that some of the detail has come back, but what it does is it kind of flattens out the overall image because you're lowering the overall tonal contrast of the image by adjusting the image all the way to the extreme. And that goes for any of these other sliders that will increase or decrease the amount of contrast based on the direction that you go with that particular edit. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the white point as well to try and fix some of that overexposure in the snow here and other parts of the image like the rail here. So I'm not gonna go too far because I don't wanna create a huge gap in my histogram. I wanna try and keep that tonal range as wide as possible. So in most cases, we want a tonal range or our histogram to have a tonal range of data from the far left to the far right without any major gaps. So right about there is my personal preference. And we may want to increase the white balance or make it warmer than it is now. So personally, I'm gonna go with something like that. All right, so once I'm done with my basic edits, I will then begin dodging and burning. So in other words, making different parts of the image darker or brighter. So in this case, I would use my local adjustment brushes to darken different parts of the image to add depth and to add some highlights to the couple's hair as well as their outfits to add a little bit more dimension to the overall image and to help them pop off of that background just a little bit more. So instead of sitting here watching me doing this in slow motion basically, I'm gonna show you the different edits that I did because we can grab our adjustment tool here and then hover over each pin or select it to see the type of edits that were being applied. So let's start with the background. So right now I have my red mask overlay on and that's showing me exactly where I applied this specific edit. So if I press the letter O, it's going to disappear. Press it again, it's going to show it. Sometimes I like to have it on as I'm working, sometimes I don't. So that's entirely up to you. Just a little quick tip. So for this particular edit, I reduced the exposure about two thirds of a stop. So now that I've already made that edit, which I did a couple days ago, I can actually come in here and make adjustments to that edit if I decide I over edited that part of the image. And I can actually add to the edit as well. If I turn that mask back on, we can see I missed a few spots here and there. And I can come over here and add to the edit. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and press O again. And then we have some edits here for the hair. Two edits for her, one for him. I actually did her outfit as well. So if I just hover over the pen, we can see the edit being applied here. And that edit is actually being applied to their faces as well, which is a small increase in the exposure. If we take a look at this pen here, I also increased the exposure of the faces as well. Let's go ahead and zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. So we can see exactly where I applied that exposure increase here. I did a highlight recovery for his face here on his forehead because it was a little bit washed out and losing detail in that part of the image. So I decided to recover that detail with these adjustments right here. As far as the hair, I did some adjustments for texture and clarity for his hair. And then for hers, I'm gonna hold down my space bar. And we can see I actually applied that on the eyelashes of both of them and their eyebrows as well. So I'm gonna grab this pen here. Let's move this up a little bit. And we can see I added some exposure increases here, texture and clarity and white points for her hair. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And let's take a look at the before and after for her hair. And we can see it has more depth and more clarity and more sharpness than it did in the original image. I'm gonna go ahead and press Y to get out of that and Z to zoom back out. Now I do have one more pin over here, which was concentrated just on this railing here to try and bring back some detail in this part of the image. Now the question is, how did I get this detail in the snow back when it was clipped at the time of capture? Because you may remember in the original image, we can see all that data is gone. It's been clipped. There's no detail in the snow or other parts of the image. But my final edit has it included. Well, here's the secret sauce 
for bringing back detail, we're going to fake it. We're going to make some fake snow. So this is how I did it. I used my spot removal tool to copy the snow from over here to over here. And if I press my letter H, we're going to see a ton of pins that represent where I placed snow. So if I select one of those, we can see that I applied a adjustment here in this shape right here. And it's copying the data or the detail in the snow from over here. If I click this pin and move it, we can add our hair into the snow instead of snow. I'm going to go ahead and undo that with Command or Control and the letter Z. So this is one way of overcoming a situation where you have detail lost in an image. Just copy and paste from one section to another. And in this case, I used the heel tool to help it blend in better because I didn't like the results from the clone tool. You will need to adjust the size of your brush, the feathering and the opacity accordingly as well for best results. All right, so that's it for our edit of the day. I hope you learned a new thing or two on how to recover highlight clipping in your overexposed images. If you have any questions or would like me to do some additional editing tips in the future, go ahead and leave a comment below like this video. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.